Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of naval warfare with missiles once again. And we're talking about the Penguin AGM-119. And no, not this kind of penguin. As much as it would be fun to talk about penguins of that configuration, we're actually going to be focusing on the US military and Norway's answer to maritime threats developed with the cutting edge technology and a unique approach to ship killing precision. And the Penguin missile seems like this kind of, you know, cutesy little missile program. The Penguin, it's certainly not the most domineering missile out there but uh you know there's a lot of capability in this missile we're going to talk about today and i have a lot of respect for norway's ambition into producing something that is small but deadly and that is truly the definition of this missile but before we get into the penguin let me know what your favorite anti-ship missile is out there mine is the harpoon i think the harpoon has been so heavily battle tested it has a huge player on the naval battlefield and I have to admit, after doing my research on this missile, I would say the Penguin missile is probably a close contender as one of my favorites. This is certainly this pilot's favorite missile. He's uh, very spiffing in that red suit. But let's get into the Penguin. So during the Cold War, Norway needed a way to counter potential Soviet naval incursions without relying upon large fleets. The country's rugged coastlines made traditional naval battles fairly impractical, so they focused on developing a highly mobile anti-ship weapon. The Norwegian Defence Research Establishment, or NDRE, and the Konsberg Vapenfabrik, with funding from the US and West Germany, began developing what would have become the Penguin missile in the early 1960s. Unlike most Western anti-ship missiles that relied on radar guidance, the Penguin introduced passive infrared homing, allowing it to lock onto heat signatures of enemy ships. This made it resistant to electronic countermeasures. The first version, the Mark I, entered service in 1972, on Norwegian fast attack boats, and the missile's compact size combined with its fire and forget capabilities gave smaller naval forces a powerful tool against larger warships. Over time, it was exported to multiple countries, proving its effectiveness in coastal defenses and maritime strike operations. The Penguin is a fire and forget weapon, meaning it requires no further input after launch. It follows a pre-programmed flight path using an inertial navigation system before switching to its passive infrared seeker for final targeting. Upon launch, the missile drops to a low altitude and follows a programmed route towards the target. As it approaches, the IR seeker activates detecting and locking onto enemy ship's heat signatures, and unlike radar-guided missiles which can be jammed or deceived by pretty sophisticated countermeasures, the Penguin tracks infrared emissions, making it highly resistant to interference. However, nowadays, flares and other, uh, you know, more modernized countermeasures are starting to obviously deter from the older Mark variants of this missile. In its terminal phase, the missile performs an evasive weaving maneuver to avoid interception. Just before impact, it pitches upward and then dives onto the target, striking near or below the waterline. The semi-armor-piercing warhead detonates inside the vessel, maximizing damage. Now the Penguin has gone through multiple iterations with improvements to each setup in its range, warhead capability and deployment options. The Mark I was the original model, deployed in 1972 on a fast attack boat setup. The Mark II had an extended range and introduced a more advanced IR seeker. The Mark II Mod 7, designated the AGM-119 Bravo by the US Navy, was adapted for helicopter deployment, specifically for the SH-60 Bravo Seahawk. It featured a two-stage solid fuel engine and folding wings for compact storage. The Mark III was developed for fixed-wing aircraft like the F-16 Falcon. It had a larger 130 kg warhead for a maximum range of over 55 km. Interestingly, the AGM-119 Alpha variant was tested by the US Air Force, but was not adopted into service. Different navies customized the missiles for their own use. Greece, Turkey, Australia, and even Brazil integrated the Penguin into their air force and naval forces, making it one of the most widely exported anti-ship missiles of its class. The Royal Norwegian Navy was the first to deploy the Penguin on its fast attack boats, and with great success using it for mainly coastal defense. Its compact size and fire-forget capability made it ideal for hit-and-run tactics, which for Norway was perfect. They could get small little attack boats rolling out there, engaging a fleet, and then running away again, which for Norway, they didn't have the capability of pulling gigantic missile cruisers and battleships, etc. They needed to use very quick interception 
boats, basically, with the Penguin on board that could do a lot of damage. With a 120 kilogram semi-armor piercing round, that is doing a lot of damage even to larger sized carriers or cruisers or, you know, even missile cruisers that you're starting to see in this footage shortly where my Penguin is trying to engage the Kirov. <laughs> The US Navy adopted the missile as the AGM-119 Bravo and did very well with the Seahawk helicopters, enabling them to basically strike enemy ships from beyond the horizon and protecting the rest of the fleet. This provided a massive standoff capability for US naval forces, reducing risk to helicopters and their crews at the time. The Greek Navy and the Turkish Navy equipped their helicopters and patrol boats with the Penguin, while Brazil and Australia installed it on the Kamen SH-2G Super Sea Sprite helicopters. Although the Penguin has not been used in major naval conflicts, training exercises have demonstrated its ability to engage and destroy moving targets under combat conditions and knock out some of the heavier ships. The Penguin Mark II Mod 7 and Mark III have been utilized the most across the majority of the naval fleets, and unlike most anti-ship missiles which rely on that active guidance from radar, the Penguin's passive infrared homing makes it very, very useful for many fleets that are utilizing a kind of primitive style of engaging ships. Compared to the US Harpoon missile, the Penguin is of course a lot smaller, lighter and designed for close range engagements. The Harpoon is a long range missile and you cannot really compare. With its range exceeding 200 kilometers, it's better suited for long range naval warfare, while the Penguin is a shoot and scoot optimized for smaller tactical strikes. The French Exocet missile has a longer range than the Penguin, but lacks the evasive maneuvering capabilities of its Norwegian counterpart. The Penguin's terminal phase weaving makes it harder to intercept even more, increasing that chance of striking the target and being shot out of the sky is a lot less. The Soviet P-15 Termit was much larger, radar guided and designed for brute force attacks. While it carried a heavier warhead, its radar guidance system was actually quite vulnerable to jamming. The Penguin completely negated this requirement and was really immune so much to speak to electronic warfare requirements or environments, but of course, flares and other countermeasures could be quite deadly for the Penguin. It could be chased away with flares because it's looking for heat. But each missile has its strengths and weaknesses, but the Penguin's infrared tracking and compact size and high maneuverability made it a very formidable weapon for close-range naval engagements. The Penguin was initially designed for only ship-based launches using deck-mounted box launchers on the Norwegian fast attack boats. And they have that beautiful little cover on the front of them that kind of pops open. And these launchers were designed for minimal deck intrusion, making them easy to install. And the logistics for changing them on and off the fleet was actually very, very quick. They were basically on rails. You pull up to the dock, you pull a box off, and you put a new box on for small patrol vessels like this one you're seeing right here. For Norway, this was perfect. Of course, helicopter launch penguins became a significant upgrade for most naval forces. The Naval Strike Missile was developed as a successor to the Penguin, addressing its range limitations and incorporating modern stealth technology. The NSM has a range of over 150 kilometers, nearly three times that of the Penguin, and features imaging infrared seekers, but also combined with GPS navigation this time. Unlike the Penguin, which follows a preset flight path, the NSM is networked and can receive real-time updates mid-flight. This allows operators to adjust its course and prioritize high value targets, particularly if you're in an environment where the fleet has some juicy big targets like carriers and instead you're going for a missile corvette. Stealth was also a major improvement. The NSM uses low observable materials and sea skimming flight profiles, making it quite difficult to detect and intercept. The missile is already in service with the Norwegian, US, Polish and Australian navies replacing the Penguin in most frontline operations. Despite these advancements though, the Penguin remains in service through multiple nations, proving that even decades after its introduction, it's a still very capable and effective missile platform. The Penguin missile has remained extremely relevant due to its reliability, affordability, and most of all, adaptability. While modern anti-ship missiles have longer ranges and advanced networking capabilities, the old school Penguin continues to serve as a cost-effective solution for naval and helicopter-based strike missions. That passive infrared seeker is still quite a valuable asset in most modern warfare profiles at sea, allowing it to function in environments where radar guided missiles might struggle a little bit. Additionally, that small size and low weight make it an ideal choice for smaller naval forces that require a flexible and lethal anti ship weapon. As newer systems like the NSM take over the frontline roles, the Penguin may gradually be phased out, but its legacy, I would say, remains. It really did kind of revolutionize anti-ship missile technology at the time, proving that precision, 
maneuverability and stealth are just as important as raw firepower, range and size. At the time of when this missile came out, it was really an arms race of who can make the bigger missile that's longer range and less detectable. In this configuration, it's almost like a little bit of a... how could I kind of poise this as a... Mm, an ambush missile, right? Something that you can use short range, quickly engage and pop out again. It's something in terms of mass use, if it was given 20 or 30 of these missiles launched at once, will be quite difficult for ships to kind of push away and because it's so small and easy to replenish and send back out again like helicopters, you would not want the penguin around your fleet because if enough of them are coming, you're not going to be able to stop them all. So what do you think of the penguin missile? I do really do think that it's a pretty prominent little missile of its time. I do feel, unfortunately, in today's climate that a IR seekers really aren't going to cut it. There's a lot of countermeasures now that can go against the Penguin, but it is being upgraded, of course, with that GPS and the uh, NSM as its replacement. I think the Penguin is still around for the medium to short term, certainly not the long term. I think we're starting to see some really high advancements in naval warfare now with the Penguin's obviously going to be uh, put into retirement, but there are a lot of countries still utilizing modern variants of the penguin because it's just cost effective and it makes sense so i'd love to hear your opinion on the penguin let me know in the comments section below if you did enjoy today's video of course leave me a like and a comment i have been reading your comments as much as i can of course let me know what your favorite anti-ship missile is i love reading your comments and if you want me to do new videos in the future also leave them in the comments so i can tell what you want me to do next and if you have been supporting me in patreon paypal or through super chats in my comment section thank you so much for your financial contributions to my channel it really does mean a lot to me and from the bottom of my heart truly thank you i hope you all have a wonderful day see you on the next one folks bye bye